To complete 100% of Forager, I'm gonna have to become the best marshmallow I can possibly be. I gotta hunt down over 100 achievements. I'm gonna need to become a complete loot goblin, an expert fighter, and I'll need to summon a ridiculous army of droids to defeat my enemies. I'll need to become the world's first trillionaire too. That is 12 zeros, a thousand billion. That's a lot. Collect resources, build your base, and expand your empire. Okay, I can do that. And so it begins with a pickaxe and a dream. I can pay coins to expand beyond this little island. And to achieve this expansion, I must of course earn that sweet coin and fill this inventory with many artifacts. Items, gear. Oh, okay, so is it combat? And stones, and berries, and wood. Can pickaxe a tree. Very interesting. As you can see, each resource collected was granting me a little bit of experience. And the little gremlin in my brain that loves grindy games for some reason began licking its lips. I used 10 stone to build a furnace and began turning wood into coal. I collected as I waited. And as I did, resources spontaneously reappeared on the map. Soon my energy was low, so I put some of those berries, plus some citrus that had dropped from the trees, onto my action bar and I ate a bunch to replenish the green energy bar. Do I have money yet? How do I have money? Ooh, what's this? This is my first gold ore. Level two? Level two indeed, and a choice to make. Industry, economy, foraging, or magic. I went for economy. <laughs> This expanded my options for the next time I level up, and it gave me a cheeky 40 gold and increased the amount of gold received from furnaces. Buy land. What is this blue thing? Hmm, I wonder if the colorful mushrooms are some kind of puzzle, perhaps related to the rainbow. I wonder if I'll be smart enough to investigate this at some point. Maybe, hopefully soon, so I don't look like too much of an idiot. I crafted some bricks in a furnace and fought my first slimes, because it's a pixel art game, so of course the first enemies are slimes. It's obligatory. I continued collecting up a storm and I soon hit level three. I think I'm gonna get the XP and just try and get levels faster. Extra XP, baby. I built a forge using four iron ingots and four bricks. And I discovered I could craft coins here along with a bunch of other goodies. I was finding coal hard to come by as it's used in all the furnace recipes and cost two wood to make. So I was pleased to find my first coal node. I also found some fiber, but I had a problem. Literally no food. How do I get food? Obviously there were the berries and oranges, but they weren't enough to keep my energy topped up. And so I resolved to build some fish traps, but to build them you need berries. So I ran around like a dingus waiting for berries to spawn. Ah! If you completely tapped for energy, you convert a health heart into energy apparently. So that gave me something to work with for now, with a slight risk of dying. I also crafted six gold ingots into coins and each ingot yielded 12 coins at once. Not too bad. I used this bounty to buy this land to the north and I was dreaming of a promised land teeming with berries, but nope. Damn it. I wanted food. That night, two berry bushes finally spawned, yielding six berries. So I was able to make my first fish trap. And I stared at it, saying, I am hungry. Please give fish. Some more berries spawned, so I ate those. And I said hello to this fairy thingo. Ooh, 12 experience in full health. Nice. So it is official. That fairy is my best friend. Except I think I may have just eaten my best friend. Things were getting a little overgrown, so I set about remedying that. Also, a cow appeared. Hello, cow. The fish trap had caught something, a fish to be precise. So I ate it and I placed down a second fish trap. I hit level four, so I had a skill point to spend. I think I'm okay now that I got fish traps, hopefully. I probably should have skilled up foraging at this point to really shore up my food situation, but what can I say? I'm a sucker for the gears of industry. I poked this chicken and an egg came flying out, but when I poked the cow, no milk came flying out. I collected, crafted in both the furnaces and the forge, and finally used the wood I'd painstakingly collected to make a bridge over to this Northern Island. Also my second fish trap sand, which was an outrage. I needed fish for energy. I paid the island a visit and discovered this ginormous chest needed a key. So for now, I settled for plundering the natural resources. I placed a third fish trap. These get more expensive the more you build, by the way. So fish trap number four was gonna cost six berries. Okay, so this game is like a, like an absolute, oh crap, I'm killing the cow. This game is like an absolute grind fest. Just kind of up my alley. I like, I like that. I unlocked foraging, which lets you find wheat and beets. And soon enough, I found wheat and a beet. Also, I made a golden key at the forge. Okay. Lantern provides better visibility in the dark. Seems good. On day four, I discovered, would you believe it? I can cook the fish. I've discovered I can cook the fish. But I was already coal starved, so this just made things even trickier. Everything costs coal. I killed this cow, but my inventory was full, so I couldn't pick up its hide or its meat. So I found I had many problems to solve. Problem one, food for energy. The plan, fish traps and random crap I find from foraging. Problem two, inventory space. The plan, hit level six and unlock storage, so I can make vaults in which to store stuff. Problem three, 
coal. The plan, collect heaps of wood and turn it into coal. Also mine the occasional coal node. This was not a great solution, but it was better than nothing. And problem four, guilt associated with the murder of that cow. The plan, embrace the violence. Guilt is weakness, murder more cows to harden myself into a cold blooded cattle destroyer. I got in the habit of cooking them fish, which doubles the energy they restore to 20 and cooked fish also restores one heart. I needed steel to make vaults and steel requires both iron and gold ingots. And all of the above requires a bunch of coal. More experience from plants and crops, four inventory slots. Right, I'm just getting this for the inventory slots. Well, that'll help for a start. On day five, I stayed on top of my food collection and production routine, and I tried to hoard coal. I made a couple more furnaces, and I eventually had everything I needed to get a few steel smelting. Can't make anything else at the moment, I just need coal. I don't know if you can tell, but I needed more coal. I also needed wood for more fish traps, so it was quite a balancing act. Once the steel was ready, I made a vault. Storage space, woo! It only had six slots, but I was grateful nonetheless. Also, items automatically stack into the vault. So for example, if I have fiber in the vault, and then pick up more fiber, it won't go into my bag. It'll go straight to the stack of fiber in the vault. Very handy. I kept collecting wood for coal and I unlocked carpentry. Decorative items, damn it, I thought it would be useful. I kept the machines chugging along refining materials and this of course remained true for the rest of the playthrough. In this game, your machines are always chugging and this little marshmallow is always collecting. As you can see, flowers had begun sprouting so I collected those too. I hit level nine that night and I picked up craftsmanship. Honestly, the descriptions of skill upgrades are kind of vague so I was just unlocking stuff willy nilly. Now that I was cooking my fish, I had no energy troubles at all. So I waxed stuff with my pickaxe unceasingly. I made a second vault and I hit level 10 and unlocked masonry. But once again, it only made cosmetic stuff. So I was face palming. I'd much rather have used my early levels for stuff that would boost progression. I turned a bunch of gold ingots into coins. So I expanded west for 50 coins and south for 80. What the heck is going on? There's a big tree in this land. Oh, there's, all, there's a bunch of enemies over here. Good Lord. Hey, he's attacking my building. Hey! The skellies and these weirdos with udders on their heads were rather rambunctious, there's no doubt. Fortunately, I could pickaxe them in the face and kill them fairly easily. I crafted a shovel at the forge, and unlocking that land to the west had actually destroyed some of my fish traps. Fortunately, the materials had been returned to me, so I replaced the traps over in the rainbow pond. And even though I just unlocked two new lands, I was kind of stressed about the resources overgrowing everywhere. So I just compulsively hacked away with my pickaxe instead of exploring. Oh, I got a shovel. Dig up dirt to plant crops up or find items, okay. I dug up some dirt, but found zero items. And I had no seeds because I hadn't unlocked farming yet. So I couldn't plant in the tilled ground. I had another skill point, so I could have unlocked farming if I wanted. But since I was doing okay for food, I opted to unlock hunting instead. I discovered I needed to save up quite a few iron ingots in order to make a bow though. This island up north was now packed with resources. So I collected them. And on day nine, level 12. Let's get this. Double craft items seems good. I can make a flower press, whatever that does. Items occasionally crafting double is indeed good. I finally ventured onto the Western Island, where I killed another Utter Head and for some reason totally ignored the statue thingo in the middle. And then... I get a slime pickaxe. Why do I not have a... How do I get a bottled torch? Oh, I can make a bottle. Bro, am I stupid? It is true that in order to bottle a bug, you must have a bottle. I needed glass and thread to make the bottles. And I was collecting sand for glass from the fish traps. And I finally made a sewing station and began refining fiber into thread. My hammer was ready, so I used it to repair that enormous amount of damage the skelly did to this furnace earlier. And I now had enough to craft four bottles, so I did. I somehow still hadn't visited visited the enormous tree to the south just because I was obsessively clearing all this crap. I just couldn't resist. Once my bottles were ready, I ran around like a goose looking for torch bugs, but I eventually surmised that they only emerge in the darkest part of night. I did bottle the fairy though, full health and energy regen on the go. That is actually a great marketing slogan for the enslavement of innocent fairies. At level 13, I unlocked the fishing skill as this doubles the fish trap yield and I wanted more sand. More fish didn't hurt either. I built a bridge down to the island with the big tree where I bottled my first torch bug and I began clearing out some of this crap before getting distracted by my fish traps. And when collecting these, I earned the angler achievement, 50 fish. What the hell? That shooting star rudely destroyed some of my fish traps, but you get the materials back, so no big deal. And I finally realized the rainbow situation was probably a little puzzle. I whacked the mushrooms in rainbow color order and a big chest flopped down. What else can I make here? Roll clip, small backpack. I crafted one of those, give me that bag space. And once a key was ready, I opened the chest. Top hat, coins are worth 50% more. Okay. I enjoyed the aggressive double item announcement every time a machine got a proc. And I picked up my new backpack before grabbing a skill to make both furnaces and forges 25% faster. I also made another vault. And I finally clicked on this obelisk, which provides bonus XP from gathering. I don't know why I didn't activate that like 100 years ago. I need to investigate the stuff that I unlocked instead of just like getting distracted by grinding. <laughs> 
To be fair though, grinding is very distracting. I cleared my way down to this now very overgrown southern island. It was just the person I was waiting for. The natural resources are being exploited by little jerks with pickaxes. I think <laughs> I think that might be me. I need you to bring me two torch bugs so I can keep them safe from harm. I had two bottled torch bugs that I was saving up towards a pickaxe upgrade, but I decided to give them to the druid. I earned some druid scrolls and an achievement in return. The druid had a follow-up as he still had concerns about the exploitation of natural resources. I too was outraged, so I agreed to help him. He wanted 30 tree saplings this time. I had no idea how to get tree saplings though, so old mate was in for a rather long wait. I headed inside the tree house and discovered a wardrobe at which I could turn into a fish. I turn into a fish? I don't want to be a fish. I went for a double leaf on my head kind of vibe. I've always wanted a little leaf on my head, so this is a big win. The food problem and the inventory space problem were now mercifully solved. And I was no longer even slightly guilty about the cow murder. But the coal problem was worse than ever. Man, I needed coal. I grinded all the way to level 16, so I had two skills to spend. I chose textiles to unlock boots and gloves, and trade to unlock markets. I finally collected the five steel needed to make a flower press, so I placed one down here. And this thing somehow manipulates and transforms matter. I used it to turn some flower and fiber into iron ore. Seems good. By the way, let's use this. <laughs> uh, that made some trees. Trees indeed. They may have clogged up my base a little. I needed a fourth torch bug, so every night I was keeping an eye out for one, but they proved elusive. And since I'd been turning the odd gold bar into coins, I now had some money, so I figured it was time to expand some more. There's lots of... Oh, 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 oh. Go, 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 go. No, they disappeared! Curse those elusive torch bugs. I continued turning gold bars into coins, and I tried to keep the new island free of debris as I hoped this might increase the chance of torch bugs come nighttime. And I desperately tried to deforest the druid's curse while still prioritizing any mineral nodes. Yes, finally. Slime pickaxe. <laughs> Been working towards this my whole life. All right, what do you want? Sweet child, I need to ask you for a very small donation. I will reward you with the power of my fairies. You want 1,000 gold? That's a lot of gold. All right, finally we got an upgraded pickaxe. Why did that take me so long? Golden pickaxe, gold ingot, bottled beetle. Where do I even find bottled beetles? I don't know. This new pickaxe did a little bit more damage and so my collecting powers just got a little faster. I crafted some more empty bottles in preparation for the mysterious beetles I needed and I did one of these ones. Oh gosh. No, I didn't mean to do that. I accidentally used another druid <laughs> thing. More trees, huzzah. At least my new pickaxe was marginally faster at destroying them. I got the hoarder feat for having 1000 items in my inventory, a lovely dopamine hit to reward my zombified grind. I also achieved the gemologist feat for having one of each gem type in my inventory. I hit level 18 by this point, And once again, I'd randomly hoarded two skill points. I used these to unlock two absolute banger perks. Firstly, mining, which gets you 40% more minerals from rocks and geology, which makes all rocks drop coal and friends after a long time of coal starvation coal desperation the coal problem was solved I got three coal just from that okay excellent this of course meant I could actually save my wood and use it for other stuff such as a slime bow I shot this green nerd and now that I'd finally gotten that pickaxe upgrade sorted and solved the coal problem I broadened my horizons to what was available to me at the sewing station I was pretty close to a few juicy upgrades I soon crafted a slime wallet which makes coins worth 25% more I also put in for my largest queue of coins to date soon the wallet was done and I crafted some gloves which increases attack speed by 10% this applies to my pickaxing so I was very pleased increasing collecting speed equals big grin I hit level 19 and chose the sewing skill, unlocking leather and increasing the work speed of my sewing stations. And I made a second one of these so I could leave it chugging away crafting thread and leather. I picked up my new gloves and reveled in 10% more attack speed. And then should I do the royal clothing? This uses one of each gem type to make a somewhat advanced material that I was definitely not ready for yet. I made one anyway, using up all of my hard earned gems just like that. My faithful gold ore into gold ingots into coins production line had yielded me over 1500 coins. But when I checked on the fairy fountain, she was missing as she only appears at nighttime. So I I impulsively expanded into three new areas instead. I'd been rewarded with a crown cosmetic for making that royal cloth, so I whacked that on my head. We're rocking the crown now, baby. And then I paid a visit to this area east of the big old tree, and it had some buttons. I'm proud to say I was able to immediately see the solution to this extremely obvious puzzle, pressing said buttons in order, and another big chest plopped down. I didn't have a key though, so I went to craft one. But first, some loving beats. You're amazing and we love you. I didn't know what to make of these nerds, but my impulse was to whack them in the head with my pickaxe. I resisted the dark urge for the time being. I returned to the chest with a freshly forged key. Oh, vampire wings, 30% chance to recover health when killing enemies. I didn't realize it at the time, but this artifact is incredibly strong, especially later in the game when combat becomes a more central part of the gameplay. You are my favorite person in the history of ever. 
I kind of want to kill them. I'd minted enough coins to clear the 1k mark again, so that night I paid my fairy fountain friend a visit. Thank you, you are so kind. Please take this as a token of our gratitude. Okay. It's a chesticle. I also made some slime boots. Move speed by 10, 5% chance to dodge attacks. Nice. And soon a key was ready. Fairy Aura provides passive health and energy regen. I never once noticed the passive regen this entire playthrough, so I nominate this artifact as worst artifact in the empire. Thanks anyway, fairy. I unlocked markets ages ago, and now I finally made one. You can of course sell and buy things here. Their stock of three items resets periodically, and although I didn't make much use of the market immediately, it became an essential tool later. I checked up on my feats. I'd completed 11 out of 103 in my journey so far, and I was sucked in by the promise of free sand on the offshore drill tooltip, as I was desperate for more sand to turn into glass. But when I unlocked it, I discovered it cost five royal steel to make it, so I was no chance of making one anytime soon. Royal steel, like royal clothing, costs one of each gem to make. I paid a visit to this island with the big brown building and discovered it was a museum. There's gotta be a museum in every single one of these games. Just, it's, it's mandatory. I was of course enlisted to help provide the museum with all sorts of goodies for various bundles, but I only donated a couple of things for now. Some stones and would you believe it to coal. After being starved of coal for ages, I now had a stack of almost 400, so donating 50 was no issue. But I put the rest of the museum bundles off for now, and figured I'd get it done once I'd hoarded copious amounts of materials. I continued my quest towards the next tier of upgrades. The main thing I was short on at this point was glass and gold ingots. I even took to digging with my shovel as this occasionally got me sand. To break up the grind, I whacked this giant beat in the face, and after hitting level 21, I unlocked prospecting, which increased the amount of gems found from rocks and rare items found from digging. And as you can tell by all them digging spots, I was indeed desperate for sand. And on the night of day 25, all right, we're going for the golden gloves for sure. Gotta get me that extra attack speed. I'd been unwilling to make sand at the flower press because for some reason I was worried about using up all my flowers. But at this point I'd collected 88. So I decided to turn about half of them into 20 sand. And my prolific digging earned me the digger achievement for digging up 50 items. I crafted the medium backpack for four more inventory space. And since the golden pickaxe upgrade needed bottled beetles, which I was yet to see, I figured it was time to expand in search of beetles. And so I turned all my gold ingots into coins. I kept up a little bit of steel production too. And once I had five, I used them to craft a fishing rod. I bought this land to the west for 960 gold. And this was my first expansion out of the grassy biome into the graveyard biome with some big bells. The sign revealed the solution for this puzzle with the lines representing the pitch of each bell's ring. So I played a little song and earned a chest. I had a key handy, so I opened it immediately. Spirit orb, use it to increase your stats. You can use these to get more health, energy, damage, or one level. I opted for the damage as I figured this would help me collect stuff faster. The graveyard also had gravestones and pumpkins. Very spooky. I finally found a fifth topaz. Okay, I think that means I can make a golden wallet now. Yep. Good stuff. Oh, this increases damage by one. I should definitely have done this like five years ago. Oh my gosh. I destroy stuff way faster now. My priority was gold ore at this point, as I wanted coins for further expansion. I also crafted some golden boots and a slime sword. I then had a fishing session, and it took me a whole minute to catch one sand and one seaweed. And after the constant gratification of endless grinding, the wait time for a fish to bite felt like an eternity, in which I questioned my entire existence, and every choice that's led me to this point where I'm role-playing as a marshmallow creature collecting imaginary resources so I can expand my fictional empire of pixels, also I can unlock some not real world at all achievements, and yeah, it was a bit of a bummer. So so I stopped fishing. I placed down a fourth vault to free up some space and bought some relatively cheap land to the east of here for 560 coins. As you can see, this was my first expansion into this sandy desert biome and it had a next level message on the side. There is secret where flowers don't live. Hello? I immediately dug up all the spots without flowers, but no glorious secret was revealed. When I collected the flowers, I discovered there were diggy diggy spots underneath, which yielded bonus sand, arrows, and a bunch of gems. So I assumed that was what the sign referred to. I now collected stuff in three or four hits. So the pace of things felt much less laborious. And I was pleased to find some nightshade flowers growing over in the graveyard biome as these were needed for some upgrades. I hit level 23 and grabbed the jewelry skill, which unlocks amulets and makes gems sell for 20% more. And now that I had plenty of wood, I made some more hefty bridges. So getting between islands wasn't such a hassle. And look at all the juicy mineral nodes on this island. Delicious. Oh, it's a beetle. Yes. I need, I need those. I then made a very wise choice. I finally decided to stop mindlessly hoarding everything. I'd been small minded, thinking I had to toil away turning gold ingots into coin in order to get the money to expand. But I had my market and I was collecting all sorts of crap that I could sell. And I'd just recently gotten that perk making the gem sell for 20% more. All right, so if I just sell, boom. 
Boom. Holy crap, I just made so much money. 5,600 coins just like that. I now knew beetles spawned in the sandy land, and I wanted them for the next pickaxe upgrade, so I expanded further east, unlocking three more islands. I queued up a bunch more flowers to turn into sand, I collected star fragments from this fallen star, and I killed the beets. <laughs> saying, please stop. Die, beet! Die! Oh, slime amulet. Gain 25% more resources. Uh... Hell yeah. 25% more resources is actually bonkers, so I was pleased. I ventured east, establishing a bunch of bridges to my new lands. I'd made sure to craft a few more bottles, so I caught any beetles that had spawned. And when I collected my slime amulet, I was pleased to see I could immediately craft the next upgrade. Golden amulet, I can make straight away. 50% more resources, okay. For the next amulet, I needed a bunch of steel, so I immediately queued up a bunch to craft. And I now had my five beetles, so I finally put in for the golden pickaxe upgrade. The pace was certainly picking up. Oh, I'm getting double sand. That is crazy. The golden amulet improved resource collection by 50%. That's 1.5 times the resources. But it obviously rounds up because I was indeed getting double sand. Very juicy. And even better, the golden pickaxe. Resources and plants may drop coins. Okay, great news. Great news. Skull pickaxe is next. Bottled torch bug. Great skull. Okay. I think I bought the one random great skull I had at this point from the market. But I otherwise had no clue how to get them. Now that the barrage of back-to-back -back upgrades had stopped distracting me, I invaded this island with a bunch of zappy boys on it, shooting them with my bow. They dropped a decent chunk of steel, so that was very handy, and I got in there with the sword once there were only two left, and I suffered some big zaps to the face, but soon I'd evicted the locals. I forgot to bring a key though, so the chest remained unopened for a bit. By the way, now that I had the golden pickaxe, resources were spitting out random coins, so I was now generating money without really thinking about it. Clearing the trees and gravestones over here earned me about 70 coins, for example. So when this random traveling merchant bloke showed up, I splurged a little, buying some obsidian and star fragments. I had no idea what these were for, but I guess I was feeling rich. I'd hit level 24, so I unlocked factories, but these cost five royal steel to make, so it was probably another case of getting ahead of myself. And I thought for sure this statue thingo was a puzzle begging for an arrow to the eyeball, but when I tried it, it didn't work, so I was stumped. I opened up this chest. Shield, 25% chance to dodge attack. And I finally headed into this structure, the ancient tomb. It featured this zappy cube, which I pushed over to this thing, which when powered, lowered the blocks, allowing access to the next room. I killed the floating electric electric frog and headed right, where I found some angry rotating fellas and my first cinder bloom. And in the room above, some angry fellas guarding some loot. Back through to the left, these laser beam levitators suffered violence, and I nudged this cube up to power some more doors. And I let this laser boy zap me to death. Let me explain this travesty. The zap cannot be dodged, though I could have just left the room to reset it. But I thought, I'll just heal through it, no worries. The thing is, this game doesn't let you have full control of where stuff appears on your toolbar, so my healing food was at like number 9. And that's not exactly convenient to press on the keyboard, so I was scroll wheeling through the action bar with my mouse, which is an imprecise method. And I ate some beets instead of meats, and beets, unlike meats, do not restore health. All that to say, I am a noob. I picked up a golden bow and queued up a golden sword upgrade, and I surveyed my expansion options, and all of them were pretty expensive. I managed to snag this 1200 coin island up here. I collected the sword, and I now had the steel needed for the skull amulet, so I crafted that along with the water shovel upgrade, and I unlocked banking. So I cleared some space and placed one down here for the cost of some bricks, gold, and steel. I had assumed I would deposit my coins into the bank to accrue interest, so I hadn't unlocked the banking skill earlier, as this seemed less impressive than the other options. It turns out I was being unimaginative, because this bank produces coins out of thin air. Very unrealistic stuff. Banks don't do that, governments do. The money generation is pretty slow to be honest, but passive income is always good. Just ask the finance gurus. Gone were the days of desperation for gold and sand. Steel was now the main material I was after, but it felt like much less of a slog now that I had various upgrades under my belt, speeding things up and increasing yield. I bought some land down here and was delighted to find a cheeky jester. After plonking down a second bank, I had a chat with him. My name is Hopfrog and I made this video game. Let's play a trivia mini game. If you get at least one answer correct, I'll give you super rare rewards. And so followed a bunch of intriguing multiple choice questions such as, what is two times eight equal to yellow? I'm so confused. How do video games get made? Nerds in a basement with coffee and magic. And after a bunch of rigged questions, I was triumphant. I'm the second worst trivia player he's ever seen. Who's the worst? He gave me a consolation prize for my miserable failure. The Lunar Medallion, which points at the location of fallen stars and increases the frequency of star falls. Along with increased steel production, I began dabbling in royal steel production, using up all the gems I came across. And on day 40, I finally overcame my embarrassment from earlier and headed into the ancient tomb for another attempt. Nothing went wrong. I did this 
for the two achievements. Big strats. You'll notice I got the achievement to dodge a lethal attack, and yet I died. I believe this is additional proof of my god gamer status. After that definitely intentional death that isn't embarrassing at all, I decided to go check out the other big sandy building. Inside was a giant grid of unpowered pylons, and four charged cubes with which to power them up. However, four wasn't enough to power them all up, which I assumed was my objective, so I left that for now. I'd accumulated five royal steel, so I placed down an offshore drill, and this produced bottled oil, would you believe? Except I didn't need oil for anything yet. I found 100 sand for three coins a piece at the market, so I snagged that banger of a deal as sand was still something of a pain to get. How about I just get rid of this? Am I gonna get all five back? Please tell me, yes, I got it all back. I used them to make a factory instead, but once again, it was a case of too much too soon as I wasn't quite ready to make fiberglass and electronics yet. I returned to the ancient tomb and this time used my brain. I decided I should avoid just standing there and dying. It was a good improvement. And I arrived at this big blue chest. Yay, Thunder Rod, use it to zap enemies into power structures, okay. The Thunder Rod allowed me to power my way through to this chest and I discovered it was quite good at killing nerds and collecting resources. Bro, this thing's strong. In this area further to the right, I don't think I did things the intended way. I believe I was supposed to bring another charged cube over from the other room, but instead I did some zappy rolls to first get the cube through and then myself. This was all well and good as I made my way through to collect the boss key in this room here, but I couldn't get back. Did I softlock myself? After some fluffing around, I somehow did this. Oh, that worked? I have no idea how, but I think I broke the game a little. Anyway, through to the boss room. The Thunder Elemental didn't really do anything for the first 30 seconds as his attacks kept missing me. So I just continually zapped him with the Thunder Rod. But then he began summoning little nerds. I kept them somewhat under control for a brief stint, but damaging the adds meant zero damage was being done to the boss. So it was a losing battle. And soon... <laughs> I'd also failed to remove stuff from my action bar, so eating food for health was once again more complicated than it should have been. I eventually swapped the sword for the cleave. Oh my lord. I tried to maintain health through the artifact that has a 30% chance to restore health when killing an enemy, but it didn't last. No! What the hell is that fight, dude? I picked up the farming perk, unlocking windmills, and I enjoyed the benefit of a rather effective thunder rod. Okay, well, this is useful. This was an improvement to my resource collection speed, to say the least. It had very little downtime to recharge, and it cleared entire islands in seconds. I was no longer a smelly peasant picking away at one resource at a time. I commanded lightning instead. I was kind of addicted, to be honest, so I cleared about two-thirds of the map before placing down a couple more banks and then powering on to clear this top area. I hit level 27, in the process and unlocked quarries. They required five of each gem to make, so I didn't make one of these just yet. I tore these banks down and placed a windmill in this area instead, at which I immediately crafted a bunch of tree saplings using citrus. These were for the druid who asked for them like two years ago. I rebuilt the banks over here next to the museum. Okay, I can finally do the druid's second quest. Thank you so much. You have saved the forest from those guys with pickaxes. Skeleton mask. Basic skeletons don't attack anymore. Okay. The druid gave me one more quest to find a dinosaur egg. I crafted some flower seeds at the windmill. One flower yields multiple seed, so this is quite efficient. And I set up a flower farm. The water shovel automatically waters the spot, so it was just a matter of plowing and planting. And soon I had a bunch of grown up flowers. With the recent influx of resources, thanks to the thunder rod, my furnaces were working overtime. So I placed down a few more and I paid this electricity puzzle another visit. I was still operating under the assumption the goal was to charge every pylon at once. And I figured there must be a way to do it with my newly acquired thunder rod. I could use the little charged cubes to charge up most of the pylons. And for the rest, I tried doing big electricity beam swings but it wasn't working. I tried a few different setups, but there didn't seem to be a way to get them all charged at once, as the charge from the rod is only held by the pylons for about a second. So I googled it. It turns out the answer to the puzzle is in picture form on the outside of the building. I didn't have to charge up all the pylons after all, and so I strove to charge up all the spots shown on the picture. It didn't work. So I headed back to Google. It turns out you're supposed to charge up the blank spots in the picture. I rearranged the cubes yet again and finally completed the puzzle. Hey, I actually finally flipping did it. I received an achievement and a spirit orb for my efforts. And my struggles with that puzzle wasn't quite so embarrassing as the deaths earlier. But I have a feeling that just like most of my videos, this video is making me look like a goose on the loose. Well, no smoke without fire. And this video is full of incriminating goose flavored smoke. I placed a couple more sneaky banks behind the museum and I'd somehow accumulated over 6,000 coins. So I bought a frosty land, a spooky land, and a sandy land. The empire grows. What is this place? This frosty tower had a binary puzzle in it, but I don't speak robot, so I was 
perplexed. I whipped out a binary to decimal converter website and adjusted the computer thingos accordingly, earning myself an achievement and some loot, including another spirit orb, which I used to gain an extra heart of health this time. Over at the new graveyard land, there were some pedestals where I placed the appropriate gemstones, except I was fresh out of emeralds, so I went on a zappy rampage in hopes of finding one. I soon did and earned another chest with another orb. I zapped and bridged my way over to the new sandy land, on which I found a mining obelisk, which grants additional experience for mining activities. I tried shooting an arrow at this eyeball again, and I guess I didn't aim straight enough last time or something, because this time... Oh, that is what you're supposed to do. I unlocked alchemy and placed down a cauldron, but the potions were rather expensive and some were completely beyond my reach, so I didn't use it just yet. I expanded the empire to invade another frosty land, and I found my first crystals and lavenders had spawned up here. New biome, new resources. There was a weird circle of dots thingo with 10, 9, 12 written on it. Most peculiar. Hey, marshmallow face. I'm so glad you're here. Quickly, I need a ton of poop. Apparently, the poop shortage was a matter of life and death, but the widow wanted 500. That is a lot of poop. The 35 poop I had came from the cows occasionally unleashing a cheeky turd, but I had an idea of how I might speed that up. A druid scroll to make a bunch of resources, and a wizard scroll to turn those resources into animals. Now poop, my lovelies. I found six animal feed for sale at the merchant, so I bought one, hoping I could perhaps speed up the poopy process. I gave it to a chicken, and eggs spontaneously popped out. I bought some more, gave it to a cow, and great news poop spontaneously popped out. And so I immediately went to the windmill and crafted a bunch more animal feed, which is interestingly made partly of poop. Delicious poop, I guess. While I waited, I bandied about with my thunder rod, and I managed to craft five royal cloth, so I used those to get the next backpack upgrade. I force-fed some more innocent cows, and poop was flying everywhere. I crafted yet more animal feed, I kept the wheels of industry turning, I placed down an offshore drill and got some bottles crafting so I could begin bottling oil to make plastic, and I crafted the nomad shovel upgrade. This will make sand a guaranteed find while digging, so I was pleased about that. When it was ready, I had a rather extensive digging session, collecting over 100 sand in record time, and I had another poop bonanza. This cow is pooing like a machine. Some bottles were ready, so I put that drill to work and... Here's your poo. Oh good, thank you so much. You saved a life today, son. Be proud of yourself and be proud of your poop. I always am, every day. I received an achievement and a chest for my stinky efforts. What's red and bad for your teeth? A brick. <laughs> I had stocked up on quite an amount of steel and gold ingots, so I plonked down a few more banks, and I'd hit level 29, so I got me some of that capitalism. I unlocked the two chests from earlier, and both had spirit orbs in them, so I took more damage and more health. And I haven't mentioned these for ages, but you should know I was constantly collecting stuff from the fish traps. It was kind of annoying, but it's always good to have a giant stack of cooked fish to nibble on. I bought another desert island to the south, and when I charged the pylon, it threw a few little chests of loot at me. This island also had the weird circle of dots with three numbers. Lots of dig spots had appeared in the sand, and biome, so I went on a shovel spree, and I sold 30 gems for a cheeky few grand profit. I resumed the digging spree, and on that little island that once had flowers, I randomly solved the puzzle and found the big chest. I have no idea how I didn't get that earlier, as I'm pretty sure I dug out the whole area, but better late than never. Oh, glasses. XP gained increased by 20%. Oh, that's a very good find. Although I really wish I'd been getting 20% extra XP this whole time. While zooming about with my big laser, I completed the Destroy 100 Gravestones feat, a lifelong goal of mine and a wonderful achievement. And when I queued up over 200 glass to craft in one go, I knew my sand troubles were well and truly at an end. And then back into the ancient tomb. I completed the journey to the boss key the proper way this time by shuffling the second zappy cube over, a much more civilized approach. And before the boss fight began, I took most of the crap off my action bars, which shuffled shuffled my cooked fish down to the third position, so now I could just hit three on the keyboard instead of scrolling the mouse wheel like a baboon. And this time, with a few damage buffs and two more hearts to my name, I was able to vanquish the big buffer. I had to eat a troubling volume of fish to pull it off, but pull it off I did. I unlocked the Tomb Raider achievement and earned a spirit orb for my efforts. I used it to add another heart. After a respectable collection of coins from the banks, I expanded my empire into two more areas. On the frosty one, there were some ghosts, and a crafting obelisk that grants experience from crafting items. I was a big fan of this one, as I was of course always crafting. You can tell by that rather jarring clackety noise every half second. I hit level 30 and unlocked treasury, so the banks would generate 50% more when adjacent to other banks. And over at the new graveyard island, the hell? I don't know what that was, but it gave me lots of experience. And these four chests gave me a rather juicy four spirit orbs, just like that. I decided to use all four to level up to level 34. I skilled up automation, unlocking mining rods and allowing crafted items to auto-collect, physics to unlock power plants, inscription to unlock inscription tables, and thaumaturgy to unlock higher level scrolls and potions. And then I finally placed a quarry. It did this. 
Oh, what the hell? I went to the whirlwind zappy strats and collected a nice juicy haul of minerals. I made sure to catch plenty of these blue butterflies in the snow biome in bottles, and I placed down a masonry and carpenter's table as I had vague intentions of doing some decorating, and I began crafting some flooring. Mining rod will automatically mine and collect resources around it. Power plant, boost the efficiency of nearby structures. I'd managed to accumulate 18 royal steel, so I began crafting nine electronics at the factory towards building these new structures. And I began placing some flooring down, but I didn't get very far. Just a little ring around the obelisk. I placed down an inscription table at which you can craft a bunch of scrolls, and most interestingly, the moldy book, which increases experience gain. I crafted some paper, then the moldy book itself. I placed down a few more banks, and once the moldy book was done, I activated the mining obelisk and went on a mining spree at the quarry to soak up all that experience. This helped me get to level 35, and I unlocked railroads. Two electronics were ready, so I placed a mining rod in the quarry, and I was hoping this thing would be collecting resources as fast as they spawned, but no, it was kind of crap. What's the point of, I might as well, let's make it a, a locomotive. I made a piece of rail as well, and the point I guess is to hop in and go for a ride. I only had a rather short track though, so this ride wasn't very exciting. I expanded further west and unveiled this handsome structure, but I didn't go in just yet as I found the market was selling some greedy mixture. This makes coins worth 25% more, and it makes coins spawn when attacking things. I spent the duration of two potions, about 16 minutes, running around zapping stuff, and earned about 9,000 coins in the process. I also leveled to 36 and unlocked shrines. These give you a choice of boons every 45 minutes. And I was lucky to be offered the colonist boon, making land purchases half price for a short time. This helped me stretch my 15 grand to expand the empire into six new lands at once. I made a second shrine and picked a boon to create a bunch of diggy spots. Glorious stuff, so many gems. I stumbled upon a juicy find at the market, six great skulls. So I was finally able to upgrade the skull pickaxe and I put in for the royal shovel too. The latter increased the dig area and also meant minerals were now dug up. So I had a bit of a digging spree before researching the crystal pickaxe and skull sword upgrades. The upgrade drought was well and truly over. I began visiting all the newly acquired islands. It's dangerous to go alone, Deckard Kane. Take this. It's gave me poo. My bird friend told me about the existence of golden eggs. If only someone was young and awesome enough to find one for me. I then got overwhelmed by the urge to clear all the debris. Also, I discovered sage scrolls that give experience were a thing. So I began crafting green pigment made of a bunch of green items so I could make some. I soon began making purple pigment for other magical items too. I checked out this graveyard land next, but I wasn't sure what to do with these skull and crossbone bucket looking thingos. I skilled up engineering, which makes industrial structures work 25% faster and unlocks droids. And droids Droids are ridiculous. In a good way, but also in a silly willy way. More on that later. My name is Anna Banana. It's hard being a princess in the desert. No flowers grow here, a flowerless princess. Because I am a purebred dingus, I took her request too literally and started planting a bunch of flowers next to her. But she actually just wanted me to give her 40 flowers. I did, and next she requested two royal cloth. Moments later, I achieved the artisan feat for crafting a whopping 10,000 items. And I was now collecting gems at a pretty rapid rate. So royal steel and cloth production was certainly ramping up. I I cleared the skellies off this graveyard island and claimed two more spirit orbs from the chests. I bridged up a storm and gave Anna Banana her two royal cloth, and in return I received the pink bow, which increases the amount of resources animals drop, and makes them spawn more often too. Since I was now fairly effective at clearing debris, I tried to keep up a habit of clearing the map, farming experience and resources while making sure things didn't get too cluttered. And I should mention that I made a habit of checking the market, and I basically bought anything that was even vaguely hard to come by. For example, bugs are kind of a hassle to catch, so any bottled bugs were purchased on site. And check out the storage situation behind the tree here. It grows. When the shrines were off cooldown, I checked out the boons on offer and accepted a bunch of free scrolls. One was a builder scroll, which I popped over here. And it made all the structures nearby work significantly faster for a short period of time. I finally had the materials organized to craft sage scrolls, so I queued up a bunch in hopes these would provide a juicy experience boost. I also began crafting greedy mixture potions for the coin boost. And somehow I'd let two skill points pile up, so I used one on supply, which makes markets stock more stuff and restock more often, and since I was now in the scroll and potion production business, I skilled up reagency, which makes these cheaper to craft. I made myself a second inscription table too. My second shrine helpfully gave me the colonist boon again, so I picked up half price lands to the south here, and I thought I was getting close to buying out the whole map, but... I don't know, there's a whole extra row down here. What the heck? It starts getting really expensive. I had a bunch of coins to collect from the bank, so I popped a greedy potion and my wealth dropped back up to 13k, and after zapping about to earn another grand or so, I went to buy 
buy more land, but I'd foolishly let my colonist buff drop off, so it was back up to full price. I decided to hang on to my coins and wait for the shrine cooldown, because 50% off is too good to ignore. Except about two minutes later, I found the wandering merchant and randomly bought two cosmic steel off him for like 10 grand. I do not think this was the wisest purchase. I skilled up transmutation, and I finally ventured inside this spooky skull structure. Inside was the skull maze. This was indeed a maze, and it featured many skulls. I fumbled my way through, fighting some monsters and collecting some loot. I eventually came upon this strange altar. Lose one max health and instantly level up three. Oof. Lose one max health and gain a bunch of food. Okay, three levels please. Holy dooly. Permanently increase max damage by one. Gain a bunch of potions. Uh, max damage. On my third heart sacrifice, I had the option to choose a droid. Oh my gosh. What the hell? The droid is just with me. What? And his name's Toothful. Look at this thing. I'm pretty sure that's a How to Train Your Dragon reference. Although this levitating fella looks more like a cat than a dragon to me, but whatever. It had a habit of zapping stuff and collecting stuff for me, and I was very pleased. I decided I better not lose any more hearts, so I moved on and found this blue chest with a necro rod in it. Use it to summon skeletons. Huh? For some reason, the necro rod wasn't showing up on my bars immediately. So I finished off the maze, earning an achievement and a spirit orb. And when I emerged, the necro rod decided to appear. So I gave it a whirl and it did indeed summon skeletons. I couldn't quite grasp what the point of this was, but later on I learned this thing is one of the most overpowered things in the game. For now though, I zapped away at these nerds from across the water, and when I killed the big one, a chest with a spirit orb in it dropped. I used some of them orbs to get my hearts back up to six, and I finally noticed I could make a slimy tome for yet more experience increase. I was immediately able to make the Necronomicon too. I used the three levels I bought with my lifeblood to unlock summoning, astrology, and spirituality. This gave me some bonus spirit orbs, unlocked some new buildings and crafting items, halved the cooldown of shrines, and increased the frequency of star falls. I built a spirit forge and sigil maker. Great skull. It looks very scary. Okay. Oh, I can make these. Spirit. I can make spirit orbs as well. Holy crap. Void steel, cosmic steel, storm rod. Much more powerful than the thunder rod. That sounds good to me. I got some great skulls crafting, which was very handy as these were previously hard to come by. And I checked out the Sigil Maker 2, which, as advertised, makes sigils that summon bosses as well as a mysterious void portal. I'd managed to craft some plastic, so I made the huge backpack upgrade. And I hadn't cleared the map for a while, so I had a zappy rampage, before making the most of the recent Spirit Forge-powered influx of giant skulls to craft some skull gloves, further buffing up my attack speed. I headed down into this fiery biome, featuring funny-looking demons, and I had a chat with this engineer. Hey there, I'm an engineer. You can tell I am smart and pretentious because I told you what my job is, even though you never asked. Anyway, since I am better than you, <laughs> you go fetch me a few materials for my factory, please. Okay, here's 10 of those. This is complicated work, so you probably wouldn't understand it, but factories need to steal to make cool things. It's not that hard to understand. All right, we helped the engineer. Holy relic, damages nearby skeletons and demons. There was a random free factory here, and these big boy rocks were dropping obsidian, which was nice. Also a free shrine and a bald fella. I'm not sorry about not liking you. You make my face hurt with panic. You are comically ugly in a non-funny way. Excuse me? I'm not sorry about not liking you. Okay. I popped the shrine and claimed some more free scrolls. These demons were dropping their horns, which was another resource needed for a few things, so the expansion into the fire biome was a great success. I hit level 44 and unlocked lasers to double the damage of both mining rods and droids, and I headed into this scully tower, in which I found four riddles. Gentle enough to soothe the skin, strong enough to break stone. Alive without breath, cold as death, never thirsty, always drinking. I can fall from great heights and live, but submerged in water I die. What force and strength cannot get through, I, with my teeth, can do. I had no idea, so I left. When bottling this demon bug, I unlocked an achievement to bottle 100 critters, and it was time to head into the fire temple. Thanks to countless damage upgrades and a giant droid cat, this temple's enemies were pretty breezy. I grabbed the blue key to open the blue door, the red key to open the red door, and the green key to open the green door. And in the big chunky chest, the fire rod. I used my new rod to blast fireballs at these weird web-covered doors, which destroyed the webs blocking the way, and this helped me get my hands on the boss key. I also used the fire rod to light up these torches, which earned me some cheeky treasure. Then it was time to fight the great demon. This big fella was pretty easy. He shot fireballs that never seemed to hit me, and summoned some nerds that I took out with little trouble. So soon enough, I was collecting an achievement and a spirit orb. I gave the fire rod a chance to impress me with its resource collection prowess, but it was hopeless compared to the thunder rod. I did use it to light up these things over here though, earning the merchant's medallion, which sped up the market's restock time by a further 25%. I used the spirit orb to level up and picked up spellbind, which increased buff duration by 50 
20%, and I chugged another greedy potion and got busy making coin. After collecting from my banks and zapping up a storm, I had about 33k. I also placed down a few new banks, and I hit up my shrines in hopes of getting the colonist boon, but I had no luck. So instead of purchasing, I kept chugging greedy potions and zapped away. I even used a minor scroll over here, and sent coins flying everywhere with the classic lightning whirlwind maneuver. I upgraded my pickaxe for the cost of 10 electronics, some death moths and demon horns, and soon the shrines were back up and I was lucky enough to get the colonist boon. 41 grand didn't get me as much as I thought it would, even with the half price bargains, as once I bought these two cheapies, I was into high end real estate. So I ended up with only four new islands total. Over here was a pillar with a sword and moon on it, which I guessed meant I needed to hit it with my sword at night. But I got distracted by a manic digging spree, so by the time it was night, I totally forgot about it. I hit level 46 and skilled up colonization to make land 30% cheaper. I probably should have grabbed this one earlier. And I paid a visit to a new friend. The skeletons are becoming a big problem. It would be great if you could help me get rid of them. Bring me 100 bones and I'll reward you. I grabbed 100 bones from a vault and helped the goblin out, earning the skull key. And I headed over to these new islands down here. This one had a combat obelisk, and inside this big tower, the fire galaxy, where shifting a pillar up or down caused all its neighboring pillars to move too. My assumption was the goal was to get all the pillars up, so I spent ages trying to achieve that. I got kind of close with only a handful still stuck in the down position, but this is the type of puzzle that does my head in, so I resorted to Google and learned that my objective was to put all the pillars in the down position. So I had literally been working in the wrong direction. I left in a rage. I placed down some more furnaces and noticed the wandering merchant was visiting, so I bought a toxic sigil from him, which I unwisely used right next to my banks. It summoned this furious robot. He had a lot of health, but I was able to comfortably heal through the damage. And the exploded green crystals he threw at me were pretty easy to destroy before they blew up. So despite the fact that it was a long fight, it wasn't too difficult. Hey, we defeated some boss. Oh, four of these things. Four spirit orbs, very juicy indeed. He also dropped some toxic sludge. I used the orbs to boost my damage some more and claimed some extra levels all the way up to level 50. I unlocked logistics to make a bunch of structures area of effect bigger, optics to unlock lighthouses, architecture to make structures cost 25% fewer materials and bargain to make market prices cheaper. Lighthouses increase nearby item drops. So I whacked one down over here because why not? And I crafted some wisdom drafts to help speed up leveling that little bit more. I placed down three more shrines and use these pretty much on cooldown to get them boons, such as free scrolls and potions. And after picking up a boon that increased the sell prices of my stuff at the market, I decided to sell giant stacks of over 1,000 crystals, obsidian, and iron ingots that I'd been stockpiling, because I was once again tired of earning coins so slowly. And just like that, almost a cheeky 100 grand. And it wasn't even that huge a sacrifice, as those resources were replenished pretty quickly. And I'd bought a dark beat sigil, so I summoned the angry vegetable and engaged in glorious combat. This beat was the polar opposite of those loving beats I'd murdered earlier. Perhaps it was one of the very same beats reincarnated and angry. Whatever the case, it didn't go well for me. Ah, run away. Oh, it damages my buildings? That's not good. If I had fixed my action bars, I maybe could have slowly killed the beast, but I was dealing very crappy damage and I was worried it was gonna wreak havoc and destroy all my buildings. In fact, it did destroy a couple. So I died five times in a row so that it would despawn. Inspirational stuff. I repaired all my buildings and tried to leave the traumatic beat beat down I'd suffered behind me. It turns out the wisdom draft is bonkers as it doubles your experience gain. So when I used these two sage scrolls with one active, I shot up a whole level. I unlocked destruction to increase my damage to bosses by 25%. Maybe this will give me a chance against the furious beat in future. I headed back into this pillar puzzle, and this time I simply accepted the fact that I'm too much of a goose to figure it out on my own. So I whipped out a guide. Shout out to Harukin, you saved my life. Their video has 460,000 views, so clearly lots of other people are gooses along with me. Very comforting news. Yay, I definitely did that all on my own. and didn't copy a guide on YouTube. <laughs> I made a demon sword, so attacks now burned enemies, and I put in for the skull boots upgrade too. I was consistently but slowly crafting electronics at both my factories by this point. It was slow simply because they take ages to make. In fact, the royal steel they're composed of takes ages to make, but at least my economy was still evolving. I began transmuting excess steel into gems to help speed things up a little, as more gems means more royal steel and cloth can be crafted. I was soon level 53, and I picked up the looting and evasion skills. After collecting a bunch of coins from my bank, I officially hit 100 grand in the wallet, earning an achievement. And I got my hands on the colonist boon again, so it was time for a spending spree. I bought all the lands down south, some of which had rather steep price tags, but I still had 38 grand spare. So I bought all the northern lands bar one, as these were actually much cheaper. This frosty island had nothing much, and the one to the left had weird green antlered reindeer. Down here was the final piece of the circle of dots and numbers puzzle. So I resolved to go around and look at all the circles to figure out what order I needed to press the pillars. This old man over here had asked me for a golden egg, and 
I have no idea where I found one. I assume a wealthy chicken pooped it out. But either way, I gave it to him and earned the fish net, which makes fish traps collect themselves. Big fan of that. Apparently, I had to collect them one last time for the fish net to come into effect. So collect them, I did. I hit level 54 and picked up conjuration, so magic structures would work 25% faster. And I got the builder boon from a shrine, which makes buildings half price. So I took advantage of this, placing down a couple more mining rods. And I bought the final land in the top left corner, achieving the feat to unlock all lands. The empire is complete. I randomly got the mine the giant crystal achievement, so I was confused, but I surmised my mining rods had done that for me. And when I headed up there, I claimed a spirit orb. On the island to the right, I tried to read the sign, but my level bar was blocking it, so I thought it just said, in the dark, will awaken the stone princess. It actually says only the flower that glows in the dark will awaken the stone princess, which I worked out eventually. I finally got around to looking at all them dotty numbery circles. So I lowered the pillars in order and earned a quiver, which meant I no longer needed arrows in my inventory to use my bow. But I never used my bow anyway, so this wasn't much of a find. I crafted the crystal boots upgrade. These have me running 40% faster by this point. And I placed down a couple more factories to increase my fiberglass and electronics production. These were technically replacement factories as I'd lost two factories factories in the traumatic events involving an angry beat earlier. At level 55, I picked up artistry, so crafted items would sell for 25% more. And I bridged over to this island where I was pleased to find one of them creepy altars. So I can sacrifice hearts for boons without having to travel all the way into the maze. I used it twice to get three levels, very juicy, and a second droid. This one was a cupcake. On the neighboring island, I used bottles of water to put out the fires on these chests and claim some treasure. And there were quite a few death moths, so I bottled them all up. Even though, as I said, I never used the bow, I needed to upgrade all items for an achievement. So I got the crystal bow upgrade and I picked up the auto repair, ballistics and cooking skills. Auto repair was mildly useful, but the other two I never used. After getting some sage scrolls from shrine boons and crafting, I soon leveled again and unlocked a pet. It was a little doggy that picked stuff up for me. By the way, I was a big fan of picking up the industriousness boon from the shrines as this made my machines go fast, much like a builder scroll. And it also made them grant extra experience for the duration. I see you have found my tower. You know, I'm going to make you go fetch some items, right? <laughs> Yeah. Don't resist it. I have a special reward for you. I'm talking about my super special magic scepter. Okay, what do you want? 20 cinder... Okay, cinder blooms. This is great. After the cinder blooms, he wanted some star fragments. So I grabbed a stack of 10 star scrolls that had piled up in a vault and used them all, causing an absolute barrage of falling stars to come slapping down to earth. And my droids and thunder rod zapped them all down into fragments, five of which I gave to old mate. The final thing he wanted was 10 void steel, which is made at the spirit forge. I had none for him just yet. I popped a potion that made me shoot poison out like a lunatic so that was fun. And over here was a more manageable version of the pillar puzzle. And wonder of wonders, I was actually able to work it out on my own. My smooth brain earns its first wrinkle. I had a quick squiz at the feet situation and found I was at 49 out of 103. And a good chunk of the remaining feats were tied into progression, completing all the islands had to offer and upgrading all my stuff. So for now, I just kept up the grind, zapping away, using the shrines on cooldown and crafting incessantly. At level 60, I picked up the management skill, allowing me to send stuff to my vaults directly from my inventory which is actually quite useful. Up in the top left, I found this ghost who had eluded me earlier as he only emerges in the dark of night. Chatting to him earned me the extrovert achievement for talking to every NPC. He and his bros wanted a fight, so I gave him 10 bones and absolutely demolished the buff heads, earning a big chest with a spirit orb in it. I crafted a void portal, which was really quite cheap at just one electronics, fiberglass, and star fragment. And yet it took me to an entirely new dimension. Defeat all the enemies before the time runs out. The void had an abundance of void roses and void stone, so I was keen to collect as many as possible. I had two and a half minutes to clear out the enemies, and once they were all defeated, another portal opened up. But I felt like I should make the most of all the resources down here, so I diligently picked away, which was quite a process as these big chunks of void stone are quite durable. I headed down to the second level of the void, where I got the sharpshooter achievement for one hitting a nerd with an arrow, and it was the same deal again. Kill all the enemies in 150 seconds, and collect void specific resources. Cupcake and Toothful the droids helped me out with their faithful zapping, but it was a slow process. By the time I'd reached level five, I already spent 10 minutes down here. I got an achievement for descending this far and for clearing level five, a chest. 15 uranium Woo. and five onyx relic. I chugged along, defeating all the enemies comfortably within the time limit, and levels 5 to 10 had these shiny nodes that offered up uranium, so I began compiling a big stack of radioactive goodness. I soon reached level 10, another feat accomplished, and some more spicy opposition, some double zappy boss shenanigans. I'd come a long way since one of these guys slapped me silly at the end of the tomb dungeon, so I was able to clean them up, but it was a lot slower, and I completed the level with only 22 seconds to spare. I earned another chest of goodies for clearing level 10. By this point, I had over 1,000 void stones, 
Rose, 350 Void Roses, 350 Uranium, 75 Toxic Sludge, and 15 Black Onyx, as well as a decent haul of all the lower tier resources. Level 11 was weirdly easier than level 10, but level 12 got a little zesty. Oh, there's a, there's a few, few nerds here. I took them all out using my sword to cleave and hit most of them at once, and it was actually very juicy because they dropped quite a lot of royal steel. Level 13 was fairly similar, but level 14 introduced these frosty boys that shot icicles all over the place. These were much less inclined to stack on top of each other, so I didn't get as much efficiency from my sword swings. I managed to kill all five or six of them, but when I was trying to clean up the remaining little guys, I ran out of time, and so I was kicked out of the void on level 14. Wait, it's just there forever now? I'd put this void portal down assuming it would disappear after one use, but apparently not. So now I had an awkwardly placed portal down here, but no big deal because I also had lots of loot, including 47 of these potions that the big zappy bosses drop. It causes lightning to arc off you, so I figured I might as well chug on these to increase my clearing speed. I spied some bottled rainbows for sale at the market, so I grabbed them and used them on this slime to complete the rain buddy achievement. I crafted a bunch of builder scrolls so I had plenty to pop to increase production speed, and I made a cook pot, but decided I couldn't be bothered with it and destroyed it immediately. And I queued up 455 steel to transmute into gems with which to craft more royal materials. And I headed into the crystal cave. This dungeon had lots of beams to direct with these crystal thingos, and when properly directed, the way forward opened. There were also some minecart zoom and frosty hooded weirdos to kill. I found some bonus rooms full of crystals and treasure, and after a long cart ride, I found myself at the boss door, but I was yet to collect the key. First, I bounced the beams around to clear the ice blocking this door, wherein I found the ice rod. I discovered I could use this to freeze these funky lanterns, and when frozen, they worked as a beam reflector refractor, and so I was able to melt the ice holding the boss key, which I collected and used to access the ice wizard boss. I had fought five of these things at once in the void, so it was quite quick to deal with just the one of them, and I earned the icebreaker achievement for completing the crystal cave. I finally worked out that this weird statue wanted a flower that lights up the darkness, so I whacked a cinder bloom in there, earning myself a spirit orb, which I used to snag my 10th heart, earning the tough achievement. I saw that I needed a sunken unk for the storm rod upgrade, so I guess this could be caught while fishing, so I stood here for a bit with my rod out, but when it took me 30 seconds to catch two seaweed, I immediately gave up. I used up a heart at the altar to get myself droid number three, and I thought I'd better try out some EMP bombs, and they were suitably impressive. I placed my first power plant down. This makes nearby structures more efficient. And after reading a couple of sage scrolls, I hit level 61 and unlocked prowess to make my farming structures work faster. I bought droid number four from the market for 10 grand. It was this mustachioed individual. And it was time to expand my endgame material production capacity. I whacked down a power plant and a bunch of factories over here and got things chugging along. I placed down six spirit forges too, as this is where you can craft void steel and cosmic steel. And I finally got another upgrade completed, the robotic shovel, which cost me some electronics, void roses, and plastic. I believe that was my first tool fully upgraded. Since the factory items take so long to craft, I added yet more factories to the mix, and fortunately I had enough gems to keep royal steel and royal cloth flowing, which meant factory items could keep flowing, which in turn meant spirit forge items could begin flowing. It was quite the operation, and it helped me get the void pickaxe upgraded for the steep cost of 10 void steel. I added a bunch more forges to the mix too, and soon I upgraded the tycoon backpack for the cost of 5 fiberglass. I'd crafted a few spirit orbs, so I popped them and dumped more points into plus damage, and I chugged a along with the endless task of keeping them structures crafty. I hit level 62 and unlocked gambling. I whacked down a slot machine and slapped the pokies until I hit the jackpot, earning an achievement. And I had a rather large amount of bank coins to collect, over 70k at once. I'd managed to make nuclear machinery by this point, so I whacked it on this factory to upgrade it, earning another achievement. And now this factory worked much faster, but it needed nuclear fuel to run. I crafted the demon gloves, further increasing my attack speed. And I hit up the altar to sacrifice another heart, picking up three levels and finally hitting level 65, max level, which allowed me to unlock the final three skills and earn the skillful achievement. One of those skills randomly allowed me to eat minerals and gems, and there's an achievement to eat a gem, so I gobbled up an amethyst. That was 65 out of 103 achievements down, by the way. I picked up the demon boots upgrade and then decided it was time to change my style. Look at all the glorious options that were now available to me. I ended up with resplendent wings and my head on fire. And then it was back into the void. A few upgrades I was working on required Kraken's eyes, and a cheeky Google had told me they could be caught fishing in the void. So I had a couple of fishing sessions and got my hands on a decent stack. And I of course fought my way down, especially enjoying the bounty of royal steel dropped by these nerds and gems dropped by the frosty fiends. I managed to power all the way down to level 19 this time, where I had my first sighting of this big demon fella who 
summoned lots of fiery skulls. And uh, let's just say there were quite a few enemies on the screen. I did not manage to clear the level in time, so level 19 became my new personal best for now. I got quite a juicy haul with which to expand production, and I used some of those Kraken's eyes to finally upgrade to the Void Sword, which causes fireballs to fly forth on swings. I whacked down a few more cauldrons and began crafting potions, as there was one to increase the chance of rare stuff dropping, and a few to increase combat power with poison and fireballs and the like. I popped all them potions and in I went. And there was stuff flying everywhere each time I swung my sword. Thanks to all the potions, I managed to clear level 19 this time with 16 seconds to spare, and I earned the Void Champion achievement for reaching level 20. But level 20 got a little out of hand and I could get no further. I got myself some of them Void Boots, and then something very important happened. I found a slime sigil for sale at one of my markets. I popped it down in the corner away from my buildings, and earned myself the Slime Regicide achievement for defeating the big squishy royal boy. But why was this so important? Well, he dropped four spirit orbs. The robot sigil boss I'd killed earlier dropped these too, but this time I was actually paying attention. Of course, spirit orbs are the key way to get plus damage, and hearts to use at the altar too. The plus damage contributes to the droid's damage too, by the way, so these orbs were the key to infinite power. And crafting them straight up at the spirit forge is expensive, but crafting sigils to summon bosses was much more manageable. And so I added another sigil maker to my setup so I could craft them faster. And with that, I began a pattern of sigil creation and boss destruction. When I took on my first Skeleton King, he actually dished out quite a bit of damage, but ultimately he too became a juicy source of quad spirit orb goodness. Within a couple of days, I downed six bosses, dumping 24 spirit orb points into damage. This also meant I was now accumulating some legendary gems, as these dropped from sigil bosses, and I was able to use these to begin crafting cosmic steel. Since I was constantly in combat at this point, I streamlined my action bar, so I could eat food without mouse wheel scrolling like a dingus, and I soon switched over to dumping orbs into hearts, so I could go nuts at the altar. And my goal with this was to get as many droids as possible. You can actually craft droids, but they are painfully expensive, so sacrificing my lifeblood seemed easier. I added a few more silly droids to the menagerie just like that. Though droids aren't always an option at the altar, so when they weren't offered, I just picked up more plus damage or potions. Eventually, back into the void I went, with about double the droids and way more damage. I breezed past level 20 this time, and by level 25, Slime Kings began joining the party. But they weren't much trouble as they like to stack on top of each other, allowing me to cleave them down with my sword swings. The great news was these slimes do indeed drop legendary gems, so I suddenly had way more of those coming my way. Sadly, the sigil bosses of the void don't drop spirit orbs, although to be fair, if they did, it would be OP. Once I hit level 29, a bunch of skelly kings joined the party, and they were simply too tanky. I could not get them all down in time, but I'd made it a bunch more levels than last time, and the bounty I'd collected was absolutely bonkers. Almost 2,000 of each gem, 255 royal steel, it's crazy to think that these were a pain to get not that long ago, and a good haul of toxic sludge and uranium, and a respectable 64 legendary gems meant Cosmic Steel was now well and truly on the menu. By the way, I haven't included any of my live recording voice in a while, and this is because I was definitely in zombie gamer mode at this point. I think this particular recording session blew out to like five hours, and it was late at night. Let me just show you. Trace some more drones. Not only was I mumbling almost inaudibly, I also pronounced droids droids. Such was my mental state. Grindy game turns grown man's mind to mush. Who would have thought? I do love it though. Anyway, I did get me more of them droids, so happy days. And I of course used a giant stack of spirit orbs to top my health back up. I finally crafted 15 cosmic steel and was able to upgrade my sword. Let's go. And this meant it now hit resources too, so my pickaxe was essentially decommissioned at this point. The final frontier was the nuclear sword, so I made sure to keep nuclear fuel and machinery crafting in some of my many factories. I did a bunch of random digging for some reason and found a dino egg, which I gave to old mate Druid. He had asked me for this like 300 years ago. I made a bunch more markets. Since each market has its own stock rotation, I figured I might as well increase the chance good stuff would pop up. And one such item was the beet sigil, which I had as yet not managed to craft. If you recall, the angry beet absolutely smashed my noodle into oblivion, but this time not so. I beat the beat. Achievement earned. And soon I was claiming my first nuclear item for another achievement, the nuclear sword. And this causes enemies to drop extra toxic sludge and uranium. So this made my nuclear enterprise much easier. 73 out of 103 feats complete. At this point, I began targeting some of the feats with more focus. I placed three bombs at once. There we go, I have three bombs active at once. Boom. I completed a dungeon without taking damage, and I began covering every water tile. Because 
because yes indeed that is an achievement. An achievement that gave me no end of torment, mind you. I made a habit of buying up pretty much everything from the markets, since I now had no other use for coin and I figured I might as well. And I of course continued killing bosses whenever a sigil was ready. I got some cosmic boots, some glacial scriptures, which I had randomly remembered were a thing. Not that I needed experience anymore, I just needed to fully upgrade it for the achievement. And a void bow. Oh, and that's my nuclear boots, baby. I continued covering up the water and I soon placed what I thought was the last bridge, but no achievement popped up. Oh no. I scoured the map and could not see where I'd missed a spot. Oh no. The quarry kind of overhang two water spots, so I thought maybe that was screwing things up, but nope. Oh, what am I missing? I tried the same with this lighthouse, but no bingo. I was stumped. Oh no indeed. I saw the skull wallet required a coupler, and I had no idea where to find one, so I headed to Google. I discovered you get it from digging in the graveyard biome, and after like two seconds of digging... Oh, I think I got one. Oh, I got eight, apparently. There are in fact rare digging items in each biome, so I went on quite the digging spree. I crafted the skull wallet, and more importantly... Can make the crystal amulet finally. 100% more resources, feels good. This opened the floodgates somewhat, as I was able to use this knowledge to immediately upgrade the wallet and necklace yet again, and again. Suddenly I was getting plus 150% resources instead of plus 75. That is a big increase. I wish I'd learned about digging up rare stuff earlier. I chugged along killing more sigil bosses and getting stronger, and the droid army slowly grew. It was actually getting annoying because they're kinda huge and I couldn't see what the heck was going on. The next mystery I came up against were the weird items needed to upgrade my various rods, including lava eels. Where the heck do I get lava eels. It turns out it's from fish traps in the various biomes, so I set up a few in each to ensure I'd catch all the sunken treasure I needed. I decided I wanted more fish traps to speed up the process, and for that I needed a ton of berries, so tons of berries I did plant. Lots and lots of berries. Somewhere in the berry shenanigans I accidentally whacked this pylon with my sword during nighttime, solving the puzzle that I forgot about 42 years ago and earning a big chest with a spirit orb in it. One benefit of those dives into the void is that I collected a bonkers amount of slime, so I was able to keep churning out them slime sigils for extreme slime king murder. I barely had to hit them with my sword at this point as my droids were popping off. I crafted the void wallet and cosmic amulet. Nuclear amulet I can make straight away. Beautiful. And I soon had the cosmic wallet and nuclear wallet. Then it was back into the void. And now that enemies were dropping the maximum gold and resources possible thanks to my radioactive wallet and amulet, I figured it would be a juicy descent. Not to mention my droids were cleaning up the entire map. Also, I needed to fish up more Kraken's eyes. I have like one, two, three, four, five, six... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I think I have 24 or 25 droids. Once I caught the eyes I needed, I absolutely blasted my way down. My first time in the void, I spent ages mining all of the individual nodes. Now I just walked through an area and the droids cleaned everything up. Absolutely bonkers. Even when the demons and slimes joined the party, I was zooming. But once the Skelly Kings showed up around level 28, things did slow down a bit. But I got through to level 30, earning the Void Master achievement, the final feat of the void. I kept pushing and when I reached level 34, some angry beats joined the melee. They told me I'm ugly and that they hate me and you're the worst person in the history of all thank you and after a hard fought level did it just took two seconds to spare Woo. Level 35 was out of control, so that was the end of the run. A very successful run, during which I collected over 6,000 of each gem, 470 legendary gems, 77,000 bones, and would you believe over 500,000 coins. I crafted the Magnum Opus upgrade, and I headed into the Skull Galaxy for some riddles. Gentle enough to soothe the skin, strong enough to break stone. That's clearly water. What force and strength cannot get through, I with my teeth can do. Key. I can fall from great heights and live, but submerged in water I die. That's quite clearly some paper. Alive without breath, cold as death, never thirsty, always drinking. Clearly a fish. Solve the galaxy puzzle, let's go. One spirit or woo! I definitely didn't look on line for that. I just feed that all out on my own. I crafted the cosmic pickaxe and continued growing the droid army. Because even though I was done with void related achievements, my thinking at this point was that my best bet for earning crazy amounts of coin to get towards the 1 billion and 1 trillion coin achievements was to smash through the void and sell everything I collected. I did a feat to light all the torches in the skull maze. I scoured every dungeon and building to find the many secret rooms, which were generally found behind cracked walls that I could destroy. And I earned another feat. I crafted the cosmic gloves and I tracked down the ghost again. Side note, 
it. Look at the droid cave butt. He is a weird butt. Did I scare you? I'm trying to get better at scaring people. I think I may need help. Perhaps you can help me. Uh, I can give you some bones. Yay, thanks. I'm totally going to look terrifying now. Here, keep this old treasure as a reward for your troubles. I completed a second quest for the scary fella, and with that I'd done all the quests in the game, which earned me another achievement. By the way, I'd managed to upgrade the thunder rod by this point, and I continued upgrading the other rods. Thanks to my various clusters of fish traps and some diligent digging, bringing in the various artifacts I needed from each biome. I crafted the nuclear pickaxe, and there's the blizzard rod and death rod. And a huge chunk of the remaining 20 or so achievements I had left to earn were related to the museum. So I finally began donating to the bundles. I'd been hoarding this whole time, so there were very few items I didn't have ready to go in my vaults. The farming bundle, the cooking bundle, the alchemy bundle, the foraging bundle, the trapper bundle, the miner bundle, the builder bundle, and almost all of the archaeology bundle. Seven more feats complete. I sold a bunch of crap and zoomed past the 1 million coin mark, earning an achievement, and eventually my fish trap snagged the final frosty artifact, and the archaeology bundle was complete. And when I talked to the museum curator, I snagged three more achievements at once. Okay, three more achievements just there, baby. One for completing the whole museum, one for collecting every seal that you get when you complete an area, in other words, every area on the map was now complete, and one more for opening every chest in the game. I made an obliterator, a tool that can be used to destroy anything in one hit. And I'd finally fished up 10 lava eels, so I upgraded the meteor rod. And between those two crafts, I earned the achievement to upgrade all four rods, and another for collecting every tool and weapon. That was 97 out of 103. Six more to go. One achievement on the list was to upgrade 100 structures with nuclear machinery. So I placed a few more factories to speed up production. And while I'd been planning to dive into the void to make money, it was beginning to dawn on me how large an amount of coin one trillion is. That is a ludicrous amount. So I googled it and found this blog's video which demonstrated the power of the lighthouse and death rod combo. Lighthouses increase the resources dropped by enemies and the death rod, that's the upgraded version of the necro rod, summons infinite skeletons. So I cleared a big area with my obliterator, I built a bunch of lighthouses because their effects stack and I made a little island on which I began summoning skellies. My droids zapped away and when the stack of enemies got so big that it started lagging, I whacked them from across the water with my sword. After about five minutes of doing this, I had shot up to 366 million coin and I'd collected quite a few great skulls and bones. 3.34 million of these, 39.9 million of these. Once I had the resources, I added more lighthouses to the party and kept going and soon I hit a billion, unlocking the billionaire achievement. But the real money flowed when it came time to sell some bones. I made sure to grab the merchant boon from the shrine, doubling my sell price and 222 million bones, up to 9.4 billion, 70.5 million skulls, 12.9 billion. Okay. Uh, this is still gonna take ages. So that was a pretty quick way to earn a cheeky 12 billion, but I needed 1,000 billion to reach 1 trillion. So I was in for the long haul. I put a movie on on my second screen and I got to grinding. And after an hour of murdering skellies and slowly expanding my lighthouse counter, this happened. Hey, we got it, baby! What a grind. All that time spent farming coin was also time spent crafting nuclear machinery. So I had over 100. I whacked them on my structures. And when I had no more structures, I built a bunch of forges and I got it done. And now I only had three feats remaining. Earn 1 million coins from banks, cover every water tile and complete every feat, which of course I'd earn once I'd done the first two. So effectively just two to go. I had a lot of banks, but they were kind of slow. So it was just a matter of AFKing and letting them rack up that coin. The water tile silly willies though, I thought I'd covered them all already. I began crafting landfill out of sand and poop, and I figured I'd better try go over the entire map, because if a random tile had bugged, I'd never know. And if I'd somehow missed a tile, I figured a more thorough go over was needed. But uh, this was a mission. This was a, a big slow, smelly mission. Also, the 3 million droids were really getting in my way, so this was like hard mode landscaping because I couldn't see what the hell was going on. Next up, I destroyed all my structures because I didn't need them anymore and many were built on bridges above water. Perhaps there were some bridges missing. I filled in this area with landfill and then replaced all my banks, as I of course needed these to chug along towards the 1 million mark, and I spent about 45 minutes systematically destroying all the bridges and replacing them with landfill. Somewhere in there, I got completely fed up with the smelly droids and I learned you can assign them to chill on structures. So I built heaps of forges and furnaces and other random buildings and whittled down my droid count so I could blessedly actually see what was going on. And after covering like a third of the map in landfill, I realized I'd been blaming a bug in the game or some other nonsense when really I'm just an idiot. Oh, there was... There was a random tile. Th <coughs> was that... <laughs> was that there the whole time? Was that actually there the whole time? Oh, well. At least I didn't have to do the whole flaming map. Ooh.
that is something of a relief. With that mammoth task out of the way, all that was left to do was AFK and let them banks do what they do. I need like 600k more. Pretty sure I'll have that by morning if I leave this overnight and then I'll have achieved every other feat and I'll get to completionist. We'll be mine. <laughs> And then we're <laughs> flame done with this. Oh man. But in the morning. All right. Oh, 15K on each. Is that gonna be enough? Some of these are only on 5K. I don't know if that's gonna be enough. I collected from each bank and no achievement. Why do these ones only have half? Surely that's adjacent. Banks generate coins 50% faster when adjacent to other banks. Outraged about the definition of adjacent, I moved the banks around a little. So I guess I'm gonna leave this on for a little longer then. I got to work. I was actually working on this very script with the game running in the background. And I'd assumed I'd only get the feat upon collecting the coin from the banks. But the achievement counted it based on coins generated. So I actually got the achievement while I wasn't recording. I haven't collected the gold yet, but it gave me the achievement. Everything is done. Completionist. Achieve every other feat. There we go. Complete. Complete. Nice. Nice. Done. Check out my 100% playthrough of Dave the Diver, a banger of a game with surprising depth and hilarious cutscenes.